Hey guys, uh, Ms. T here to go over some reminders about the AP World History exam procedures uh, and what's all going to happen on Monday, some things that you might want to know or be reminded of. Uh, let's get started. So first of all, what do you need to bring with you? Well, there are several things that you must have with you on the day of the exam. The first that you must have is a non-mechanical number two pencil. This is College Board. They're the ones who are weird about mechanical pencils. I don't know, it's a test security thing, but you need to have some sort of normal number two pencil that is not mechanical. You also need to have a dark blue or black ink pen for the writing sections. That's the SAQs, the LEQ, and the DBQ all must be done in some kind of normal colored ink pen. You also need to have a mask that covers your nose and mouth. You're gonna be on campus, so you need to have that. You also need to have an ID with you, preferably a school ID, but also driver's license works as well. It can be an older school ID, as in something from your freshman year, but you do need to have an ID with you. This is so that you can pick up your device after the exam. If you don't have one of those, they can still make it work You'll still be able to get your device, but uh, it'll just be a little bit more of a time consuming process. So if you do have a school ID or driver's license, you need to have that with you. You may want to have with you extra writing utensils, an eraser, a jacket or sweater, a bottle of water, some sort of snack, maybe some personal hand sanitizer. They will have extra writing utensils and pencil sharpeners uh, in the testing room, but just in case you have a preference on your writing utensils, just bring them with you. You cannot have at all in the testing room any sort of electronic device like a cell phone or smartwatch or anything that receives a signal or makes a sound. That does include fitness trackers, right? Or watches that have some sort of alarm on them. Just anything that is a personal device that receives a signal or makes any sort of noise at all, okay? Again, you cannot have mechanical pencils. I'm gonna say it one more time. You cannot have mechanical pencils. It's a weird college board thing. They do the same thing on the SAT and the PSAT. You cannot have mechanical pencils. You also cannot have any weird colored pens. So nothing light blue or green or purple. It has to be dark blue or black ink pen. You cannot have any review materials or papers with you in the room. And you cannot have any beverages that aren't water or any containers that can't be sealed. So it's gotta be some sort of bottle that has a lid or a cap to it. It cannot be any sort of like soda cup and for the love of all that is good, you cannot bring your iced coffee into the gym. I don't care if you just bought it. I don't care if you've only taken one sip out of it. You cannot have that iced coffee with you in the gym. They will make you throw it away before you enter. So don't make it a thing. Just either finish it before you go into the gym or just don't get one that day, okay? All right, where do you need to be and when? unless you have already established that you are doing the second administration, then you are taking the exam on Monday morning, May 10th. Everyone needs to be on campus outside of the auxiliary gyms by 7.30 a.m. So you will not go to your first period. You already have excused absences for your morning classes or any of the classes that are going on during testing, but you need to be at school in front of the gyms by 7.30 so that they can let you in and get things started so that testing, actual testing can begin by 8 a.m. Virtual students, unlike STAR, there is no special place for you to enter. You'll just go in through the main entrance in the front like everyone else, uh, walk through the that main hallway there until you get to the lion statue. Once you get to the lion statue, turn right and the gyms will be in that direction. Just follow where everyone else is gonna be congregating. I'll be there as well, so you can watch out for me. Students who have accommodations and aren't testing in the gym uh, will go to their rooms after dropping off their devices, which I'll talk about in a moment. 
But if you are a student who is testing in another room with accommodations, you should have received that information from me this weekend. Uh, if you did not receive an email telling you where you're going to be testing, then assume it is the gym. You will be in the gym with everyone else. So what do you do with your devices? So again, a device is any sort of personal electronic device, a cell phone, a smartwatch, anything like that. Uh, and what you're going to do with those is you put them in a paper bag that has your first and last name, grade level, and student ID written on the front. So for a bunch of y'all, I had you make those on Friday. If you still have yours from Friday, then you need to bring that with you. You are responsible for that. If you gave yours to me, I have it and you can grab it from me. If you're virtual or you're absent on Friday, then you will also come see me for the paper bags, okay? You're gonna drop those bags off at the concession stand near the gym. Again, just if you're not sure what I'm talking about or where that is, just watch for where everyone else is going. Somebody will know. Uh, so you'll drop off, off your phone, your Apple Watch, your Fitbit, your AirPods, all of it. Just put it in the paper bag, roll it up, give it to the people at the concession stand. When testing is over, you will pick up your devices, you'll pick up your bag from the main hallway in front of the library slash Miss Rose's office. So kind of over near the fishbowl over there, there will be a bunch of house secretaries with your phones waiting for you to come pick them up. You need to have an ID to pick up your phone and your devices. Ideally, again, a student ID. This is why you need to have it with you. If you don't have a student ID, there will still be a way for you to get your phone back. It will just be a little bit more involved. So just be aware of that. If you do have a student ID or driver's license, make sure that you have that with you. Any phones that aren't picked up in a timely fashion, meaning, I don't know, you get distracted between being dismissed from the gym and you know, going over across the cafeteria to that main hallway uh, and suddenly it's half an hour later and you don't have your phone back, well, then you can go get your phone from your house office. Also, if you are a student with accommodations like extended time, you will pick up your phone from your house office. Laptops in this instance are not considered devices, largely just because they can't fit in that paper bag. So if you absolutely must have your laptop with you at school on Monday, then it needs to be shut down and stored in your backpack. And once it is there, don't touch it, don't look at it, don't even think about it, right? Just shut it down, put it in your backpack, leave it be until you're done with testing. However, if you do not have to have your laptop with you at school on that day, I suggest leaving it at home just for this one day, leave it at home. If you don't feel comfortable handing over your devices, you know, put them in the paper bag and picking them up later, that's okay, but you have to leave your phone somewhere else than, you know, leave it at home, leave it in an athletic or instrument locker, leave it in your car, leave it with a friend who's not taking the test, someone that you trust, but it cannot be in the testing room, period, okay? Cannot be in the testing room. Just don't even tempt it. Don't think about it. Just, it cannot be in the testing room at all. So if you don't want to drop it off at the concession stand, then find another place to put it that isn't your backpack. All right, what do you do with the rest of your stuff? Well, so here's how the rest of the morning will go. Once you've dropped off your device and everyone is standing outside the gym, there will be lists with your name and a table number. You need to pay attention to which gym your table is in. So everyone gets their own table. It's one person per table. That's always been the case. Usually it's, you know, number table number one through 140 will be in the left gym and everyone else will be in the right gym or something like that. Don't quote me on those numbers. Just you know, read the list. Once you are allowed to enter the gym, you'll go in, put your belongings around the outside of the gym, the perimeter of the gym, again, similar to star, and then you will go find your table or seat. Do not enter the gym 
until an adult from inside of the gym opens the door and says, okay, you can come in now. Just because the door is unlocked doesn't mean you can go in. They're setting up all the materials. There are secure testing materials in there that you guys can't have access to. So don't just walk into the gym, wait until an adult opens the door and says, you can come in now. Then you can go in, put your stuff down and find your table or seat. When you go over to your table, there are some things that you can have at your table and there are things that you cannot have. Among the things that you can have at your table are extra writing utensils, uh, erasers. I believe you can have, you know, handheld manual pencil sharpeners. Uh, you can have glasses if you have your reading glasses or something like that. But you cannot have at the table with you your backpack or any other of your personal belongings like that. You can't have a ruler or calculator. You don't need them for this. I promise. I promise. You don't need them. You can't have any sort of books or testing or sorry, review materials or homework or anything like that. There's no working on homework when you're done with this because you're not going to have time. Uh, you also cannot have with you a snack or any sort of drink or water or anything like that. You cannot have that at your table with you. All right. See, look, poor little Timmy right there just got no score. He got disqualified because you cannot have your stuff at your desk with you. All right, so what if during the course of this very long test, you need some sort of break? You are allowed to use the restroom during the test. You use the restroom pass, you get it from the front, from the proctors, and then go during the test. But you need to be aware that the timer does not stop. So be cognizant of how much time you're using. Uh, be aware of how much you have left to do in that section of the test, right? things like that. Okay. Just try to be aware. And if there is a short amount of time before the section that you're working on is done, like let's say you finish your multiple choice and you still have, you know, five minutes left in the, in that timer. I do not suggest using that time to go to the restroom because you don't know quite how long it's going to take you. And you, you want to be in the room when they switch over to the next section, because you know, they're going to be picking up testing materials. They're going to be opening up new stuff. It's just not a good time. That transition time is not a good time to be in the restroom. There will be a 10 minute break after the SAQ section of the test. So 55 multiple choice, three SAQs, and then there's a 10 minute break after the SAQ section of the test. You can use that time to stretch, to go to the restroom, get a snack, drink your water, but you cannot access your personal belongings after the exam has begun, period. You cannot dig into your backpack for anything, which means if you have a snack or water or something that you feel like you might need during the exam, you need to put that outside of your backpack before the test starts. So when you go put your stuff down on the outside of the gym, so when you walk in, take that stuff out, place it right next to your backpack, but outside of your backpack because you cannot dig in there once you once it's all started. All right. Now, seriously, guys, for many of you, this is your first AP exam. Even if you took an AP class last year, this is maybe your first time doing an actual real AP exam at school. So more than anything else, you need to listen. You need to listen to the instructions that the proctors are giving to you. Pay attention. Don't talk while adults are talking to you. But also, don't talk once the exam has started. Okay, that will get you disqualified. Listen to the instructions and don't touch anything until you are told to do so. Right? Don't fill anything out. Don't open up booklets. Don't open up any packaging. Some of the sections are in little shrink wrap packages. Don't open it. Don't put stickers on anything. They're going to give you some labels. They're going to give you some stickers that are used to seal up test booklets. Just don't do anything. Even if you think you know what they're going to say next, even if you think you know what the next step is going to be, don't do anything until they tell you to. But that also means you need to be listening to what they tell you to do. All right. What about when you're done? When you are done, when the time is up, and all the materials have been collected, you will be dismissed by the proctors. 
do not leave until they explicitly tell you you can go. I know you're going to be anxious to get out of there, but you really got to wait until they say explicitly, you are now free to go. They're going to give you some information about like which lunch you're going to be released to, uh, what the next class is that you're expected in. Okay, but don't leave until they say you can go explicitly. you got to represent AP World History better than that. Okay, don't rush out while they're speaking. Now, if you are a face-to-face -face student, if you are typically on campus every day, you will be dismissed to go to whichever lunch is closest to starting. So if C lunch is most of the way over, then they will just send you to D lunch. Um, if, you know, E lunch started five minutes ago, they'll send you to E lunch. So pay attention to what they tell you uh, they're sending you to, okay? If you are sent to C or D lunch, you will likely be expected in your fifth period class once that lunch is over. It being dismissed to go to lunch does not mean, okay, it's C lunch, I'm gonna eat C lunch, and then I'm just gonna hang out in the lunches for the rest of the time. No, when that lunch is over, you have to go to the next class, whatever that is. So if it's C or D lunch, you need to go to your fifth period class. If you are sent to E lunch, you will be expected in your sixth period class once that lunch is complete. So again, you need to pay attention to what time it is, what lunch they're sending you to, and when you are expected in class again. If you are a virtual student, when the exam is over, you are free to return home so that you can attend your afternoon classes virtually. Again, just like with the face-to-face -face students, you need to pay attention to what class period you will next be expected in. Because if the face-to-face -face kids are getting released to CRD lunch and are expected in fifth period, you will also be expected in fifth period. Uh, same with e-lunch. You know, once that lunch is over, you are expected in sixth period virtually, right? With that said, if you are a face-to-face -face student and you finish the exam and an adult comes to pick you up to release you for the day, then hey, you're released for the day. Similarly, if you are a virtual student and you are at school, um, as far as I'm aware, there is nothing keeping you from just finishing out the day on campus, right? So I haven't heard anything explicit about that one way or the other. So you decide what you are going to do on that day and just stick with it, okay? But once that's all done, you will be done. Right. For my fifth and sixth periods, you can be sure of one thing and that that is we will not be doing anything after the exam on that day. So, you know, bring a coloring book or whatever. Um, we're just going to be hanging out. Uh, but you may be expected to do things in other classes. If you you know have normal classes, sixth and seventh period, especially classes that are not primarily sophomores, uh, you may still be doing normal things on that day. So just be prepared for that. And then that'll be it. And then you'll be done. Congratulations, you'll have done it. Uh, so if you still have questions after all of that, then you can send me a message via Canvas, email, remind text, whatever you like. I am also going to be doing a, a sort of last minute Zoom session on Sunday afternoon. So Sunday, May 9th, uh, I think what I said was from three to five possibly. Um, but just, you can go to Canvas, click on the regular class Zoom link on the Canvas homepage, uh, and I'll be hanging out there Sunday afternoon. So if you have any more questions, you can go there to ask. If you want to review anything else, go there. Uh, otherwise, you can send me any concerns you might have. I'll do my best to answer them. All right. Thank you, guys. I will see you on Monday morning, at the very least. Have a good one. Make sure you eat a good breakfast on Monday morning. But again, don't bring that iced coffee into the gym. We will make you throw it away. Uh, have a restful weekend and I'll see you guys then. Bye.